Good evening. As I am speaking to you now, General Secretary Gorbachev is leaving on his return trip to the Soviet Union. His departure marks the end of three historic days here in Washington, in which Mr. Gorbachev and I continue to build a foundation for better relations between our governments and our peoples. During these three days, we took a step, only a first step, but still a critical one, toward building a more durable peace. Indeed, a step that may be the most important taken since World War II to slow down the arms buildup. I'm referring to the treaty that we signed Tuesday afternoon in the East Room of the White House. I believe this treaty represents a landmark in post-war history because it is not just an arms control, but an arms reduction agreement. Unlike treaties of the past, this agreement does not simply establish ceilings for new weapons. It actually reduces the number of such weapons. In fact, it altogether abolishes an entire class of U.S. and Soviet nuclear missiles. As you see from the map on the screen now, the Soviet missiles, which will be removed and eliminated under the treaty, have been a major threat to the security of our friends and allies on two continents, Europe and Asia. Under the terms of this treaty, we will be eliminating 400 deployed warheads while the Soviet Union eliminates 1,600, or four times as many. Now let me also point out that this does not, however, leave NATO unprotected. In fact, we will maintain a substantial deterrent force on the ground, in the air, and at sea. Our commitment to NATO's strategy of being able to respond as necessary to any form of aggression remains steadfast. Since my first days in office, I've argued that the future belongs not to repressive or totalitarian ways of life, but to the cause of freedom, freedom of the marketplace, freedom to speak, assemble, and vote. And when we see the progress of democracy in these last years, from Latin America to Asia, we must be optimistic about the future of our children. When we were together in Iceland, Mr. Gorbachev told me that this sort of talk is sometimes viewed in the Soviet Union as a threat. But I told him then, and I've said since then, that this is no threat at all, but only a dream, the American dream. And it's a dream that has meant so much to so many, a dream that still shines out to the world. To sum up then, this summit was a clear success. We made progress on each item in our four-part agenda. Mr. Gorbachev and I have agreed to meet in several months in Moscow to continue what we've achieved during these past three days. I believe there is reason for both hope and optimism.